My name is James Bell and I'm from the German Aerospace Centre uh, DLR. Uh, I'm a research engineer in the field of experimental aerodynamics, specifically for ground vehicles, so trucks, trains and cars. My academic background is I have an aerospace engineering degree as well as a PhD in the area of high speed train aerodynamics that I got in Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. And now I'm here at the DLR in Göttingen, Germany in the Institute of Aerodynamics and Flow Technology. And currently I'm working in uh, for Europe's Rail uh, project, uh, specifically flagship area 5, for flagship project 5, uh, transformer it's called, and we're looking at freight train aerodynamics specifically for improving efficiency as well as safety of operation. My name is Svenja Heinz. I work in the Brussels office of the German Aerospace Centre DLR. There I'm responsible for DLR's transport research topics. In this capacity, I advise on strategies, coordinate communication and represent DLR's interests in Europe. I studied engineering and management as well as planning and operation of transport systems. Yeah, so the most useful skill I've de developed throughout my career, I would say, is problem solving. As an engineer, you're always solving problems. Um, and this entails, you know, first defining the problem, understanding what the problem is, whether the, it's a research problem or something for an industrial partner that specifically come to you with a problem. Uh, and then, of course, figuring out how to solve the problem and get the results. Um, importantly, yeah, the idea of research is that you contribute to the body of knowledge, so you want to understand already uh, what knowledge exists, what uns is understood, and then making sure that the results or the, the findings that you can have have an impact, that they have real value, um, they contribute, they have a benefit, um, and they yeah, contribute to the, to the real world. The most useful skill is properly communicating. May it be when discussing and during negotiations or communicating your course to the public. To first listen, then understand your counterpart and adopting your communication accordingly is a skill that might still be underestimated. In terms of hard skills, it would most likely be advanced Excel skills. Once you get beyond the basic functions, the possibility of what Excel can do is astonishing. Yeah, what skill do you want to learn? So one of the skills that I want to learn uh, and develop further is project management. I'm in something of a transitional stage in my career where I'm moving away from just doing things hands-on myself, from experiments for example, um, to starting to lead and manage projects. Uh, so better being able to, to manage these and, and work with teams and guide teams is a skill that I'm looking to improve upon. Uh, the nice thing being is with, with such a, a transition you can start to be able to give your ideas um, to a wider, wider projects, more projects at the same time. Uh, and then of course you have the benefit of working with other, other people, uh, getting their input, and perhaps they think slightly different to you or do things differently or have different skills so we can attack and, and solve problems together uh, in, in different and more efficient and more interesting ways. As a generalist, I always try to learn and understand as much as possible about technologies and development. In general, I think for such an integrated system, just like the railways, Trying to understand the different parts that construct the whole should be a goal for everyone involved. Yeah, so one of the skills that I'm developing and learning at the moment is uh, a new experimental methodology or utilizing new experimental methodology. So as an uh, experimental aerodynamicist, we're constantly having to learn uh, new skills, um, which can sometimes be a blessing uh, as well as a curse. So this can include not just learning about aerodynamic uh, applications or engineering applications, or industrial applications where aerodynamics is important, um, such as uh, train aerodynamics or freight train aerodynamics, um, but also uh, learning about aerodynamic phenomena that are relevant for your, for your industrial problem. Um, processing and analytical techniques, so the way we play with data or process data to better understand um, results from measurements that we've taken, as well as experimental methods um, that can, we can utilize to better help us answer questions. So in this case we're using an Internet of Things, um, we're utilizing Internet of Things uh, uh, hardware infrastructure as well as software architecture. And we're using this in where I am now, this is the DLR Freight Lab. Um, this is a measurement container which is self-contained with power supply, with solar panels on the roof, um, remote access with mobile commu uh, communications, um, uh, satellite navigation and then a full data acquisition system inside where we've applied Internet of Things. 
So we can use this uh, because this IoT based um, hardware is much more reliable and much more efficient, so it uses less power. Uh, when the power is on, it's quite simple and just starts taking data. Um, so in this application, it's quite useful because it's obviously a self-contained unit uh, on, on a, in quite, let's say, challenging operating conditions in a, in a freight, on a real freight train in, in the external environment. Um, so this is where we were able to really use this new, say, let's say, new technology um, in contrast to what would be classic laboratory type equipment. And so by being able to use this new technology, um, we can better understand the, the problem, take different measurements, more measurements, more detailed measurements, more different types of sensors, and really understand the problem and, and come to a better solution. Um, so we're using this for um, to look at the, the aerodynamic characteristics of a freight train in real world operation, and eventually use these uh, measurements to enable uh, improved uh, operating efficiency as well as safety of freight trains. And so some of the skills that, that I've used in, in this or developed as part of this and I'm still developing honestly is, um, yeah, there's probably a hundred, but anything from the programming, utilizing Internet of Things software architecture, so the database management, real-time um, processing and plotting of data, uh, as well as down to the hardware, so the, the sensor allocation, cabling, um, even to printed circuit board design and manufacturing, all of this uh, relatively new. And this is one of the things I like about being an experimental aerodynamicist is um, that there's a problem and then you have to develop and collect these new skills to uh, answer and address this, this problem. Networking is an essential part of my job and also important in general in work life. I'm pretty solid in maintaining my network, but creating new contacts just for the sake of future interactions is something I'm still working on. People to whom this comes naturally impress me, but I think for the rest of us, practice makes perfect is the way to go. Okay, a skill that I have to use every day is uh, interpersonal and communication skills. Uh, engineering and science can be cons sometimes seen as a, a bit of a dry uh, field, but the reality is that we have to interact with a number of different people and different types of people, so other engineers and scientists, as well as technical staff that we work with day to day, managers, as well as clients, industrial clients, engineering clients that we work with uh, and work for. Um, in addition to this, of course, we have to uh, publish, so write up our results and publish you know, we have dissemination of our research as well as conferences where we present, but also network, uh, as well as writing and applying for grants. So interpersonal and communication skills are really important. And this, of course, is magnified, and it's a great opportunity, it's, but it's magnified in, in, in a project like Europe's Rail, where there's a, a lot of different um, countries involved. I, as an Australian, have to be careful to speak my international English um, so that I'm quite well understood and also a little bit of the German that I'm slowly picking up uh, and it's really nice to see people come together with a common this international English but everyone has aspects of little other languages that they speak as well so it's really inter uh, yeah, interpersonal communication is quite important. A skill that I use daily is definitely English as my second language. Being able to express yourself in English without struggling to find words, at least for most of the time, gives you a big advantage when working in Europe. You can focus on the topics, not on the expression. And you can start enjoying identifying nationalities just by hearing the English. Okay, a skill that's in high demand in my industry, um, coming from the perspective of an uh, aerodynamicist, an experimental aerodynamicist, I really think the most important thing is enthusiasm and an interest to learn. So, yeah. We perform research and so you want to be able to have an interest in discovering new things but also coming to a results or the solution to problems that have real world benefit and that you can actually hopefully see um, the, the output of your work applied in the real world and come to a yeah, real world benefit and have impact. I think generalists who are able to connect different dots to the whole picture and specialists from other industries, for example data scientists, who are able to feed their knowledge into the railway sector are needed to create the future of European railways. Of course, everybody is aware that there is also a lack of specialists, but being able to create synergies between sectors will be necessary to cope with the decline of workforce in Europe.